Hi guys, this is Malinki. Welcome to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today I will discuss about innate immunity part 1 that is first line of defense. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So in the last lecture, we have learned innate immunity provides first and second line of defense. First line of defense is nothing but a prevention of the entry of microorganisms in our body. So in this way, our immune system tries to inhibit foreign pathogens from entering our body. So the first line of defense is provided by skin, mucous membrane, tears, ear, nose, saliva, stomach, reproductive tract. Now we will discuss them one by one. So first is skin and skin is divided into two parts epidermis and dermis. Epidermis is the outermost layer and dermis is the innermost layer. Now the outermost layer of our skin undergoes continuous shedding. That's why we use skin scrubber right it removes our dead skin cells jokes about so this shedding of skin prevents pathogens from entering our body so it just removes them from our skin and our skin has a natural uh, pH that is 5.5 .5. and this much of lower pH also inhibits growth of some microorganisms because this is Acidic pH. Acidic pH. Uh, and epidermis also contains a special type of cell that is keratinocytes. These cells, these keratinocyte cells, they produce actually keratin. They produce keratin. And keratin is a protein. And it makes the surface of the skin mechanically tough. That inhibits the entry of some pathogens. So keratin makes our skin tough. And it inhibits growth, entry of some pathogens. And dermis contains, first of all it contains hair. It captures bacteria and inhibits their entry in our body. Sebaceous gland, it produces, it produces sebum. That is an oily secretion. So sebum is an oily secretion. And this sebum, it actually contains free fatty acid. Free fatty acid, FFA. And this free fatty acid, it reduces the pH. So it reduces pH and that inhibits growth of some bacteria. Sweat glands produce sweats that we know. So sweat has the capacity to flush pathogens. Sweat can flush pathogens, right? And sweat also contains some antimicrobial proteins or AMP. So that may also kill pathogens. And sweat contains lysozyme. So lysozyme is antibacterial we all know because lysozyme attacks peptidoglycan molecule of bacterial cell wall. Bacterial cell wall has peptidoglycan and that is actually cleaved by lysozyme. So they can kill bacteria. In this way lysozyme kill bacteria. So in the last video, I have already mentioned that mucous membrane is a tissue lining that covers respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, urinary tract, um, reproductive tract. So this mucous membrane actually secretes a sticky, thick fluid. fluid. Uh, so it, this fluid is called mucus and is mucus actually it helps to trap pathogen. This mucus helps to trap pathogen and mucus membrane also contains hair like cilia. 
it also contains cilia and this cilia it actually it is a sweeper it sweeps mucus and pathogens toward body openings where they can be removed from the body so when you sneeze or you cough pathogens are removed from the nose and throat so sneezing and coughing is sometimes good and our eyes secret tears so tear first of all tear keeps our eye watery it maintains the fluidity of eye and if your eye is fluid it prevents the microbes from settling on the eye surface so microbes cannot settle there so tears also contain lysozyme and we already know that lysozyme has antibacterial property our external ear contains hair external ear contains hair that helps to sweep microorganisms and prevents their entry and our ear canal produces ear canal it actually produces a waxy oil that is called cerumen waxy oil that is called cerumen and which is more commonly known as ear wax so this wax actually protects the ear from microorganisms this antimicrobial property of ear wax that is due to the presence of saturated saturated fatty acids lysozyme and especially the slight uh, acidity of cerumen because the acidity uh, the ph of cerumen is actually 6.1 so that is uh, that is also acidic and these things actually inhibit the growth of pathogen nose contains mucus coated hairs and it traps microbes from the air during inhalation and mucus of nose also contains lysozyme so that is antibacterial in action okay saliva so continuous flow of saliva in our mouth it prevents pathogens from colonization so saliva also contains lysozyme that kills bacteria and saliva is a natural antibiotic human saliva contains some natural antibacterial agents like lactoferrin and lactopar oxidase so saliva contains these natural antibacterial agents and these natural antibiotics can block development of an infection gastric juice of our stomach contains we know that it contains hcl or hydrochloric acid and pepsin so that can kill bacteria within 15 minutes and it has a very low ph that is 1.5 the ph is very low 1.5 that much of high acidity is capable of destroying most of the pathogens vaginal secretion has a very low ph this is like 3.8 4.5 and this is moderately acidic that destroys pathogen from settling and the menstrual flow is exceptionally rich in hemoglobin fragments hemoglobin fragments so that has the bactericidal properties hemoglobin fragments that have some bactericidal properties uh so this this is actually all about the first line of defense how our innate immunity plays a significant role in the prevention of entry of some pathogens so we will learn about second line of defense in the next lecture bye bye